Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to another tutorial on how to create 2D anime style water effects using After Effects and Flash. This is another one that I haven't actually traced over in Flash, but it's a really nice idea. What we've got here is a kind of water spout. So if I scrub through this, you can see that it's got a kind of interesting spinning water spout effect. Let's check out how I've done it. So what we've got is a pre-comp here. I'm going to rename that Wave Warp and this one Main Comp. There we go. So we know what we're doing. So let's take a look at what we've got inside this pre-comp. We've got two different shape layers. So let's take a look at what we've actually got inside this pre-comp. We've got a shape layer here. If I turn off the one on top, you can see that we've got a shape that I've drawn, this kind of triangle with a rounded top, and I've got a blue stroke on it at 170 pixels. So I'm going to call this layer blue. And then on top of that, we've got exactly the same shape with a much thinner stroke. Let's just click on that. Uh, just set to 10 pixels. So it's exactly the same shape on both layers with two different strokes of different widths on them. So I'm going to call this one white. There we go. And let's take a look at what effects we've got on each. On this blue layer, all we've got is a posterized time. It's set to eight frames a second. That's all. On this white layer, we've got wave warp and posterize time. So I'm not sure we actually need a posterize time on this blue layer, so we can delete that because the blue layer is not going to move. We need a wave warp on the white layer to get this interesting effect. So if I turn that on, you can see we've got this kind of striping effect, like so. It moves through that kind of spout. It's really interesting. So let's take a look at how I've created this striping effect. The wave type is set to sawtooth. The wave height is 127. The wave width is 166. The direction, the reason why it's this crazy value of 1 times 252 is I've just wound it around to the point where it does what I want. There's no particular science to that. The wave speed is 1, so it's moving in this direction to the right. There's no pinning, and again, I've set the phase to this crazy value because that's what looked best. So if I move around the phase, it changes where it begins in the animation. Uh, Anti-aliasing is set to high, and the posterized time is set to 8. I can probably delete this posterized time because we're going to posterize the time again in the main composition. So let's jump to that and check it out. The reason why I've made uh, this into a pre-comp, this wave warp, is so we can apply another wave effect onto the whole thing. So you can see this blue part is now wobbly as we move through time. And it's a much cooler kind of water spout effect. So I don't know if you were really into Pokemon or something and you wanted one of the Pokemon to be shooting a water spout. This is a really good way of doing it. So the wave warp effect I have on this pre-comp is a sine wave. So if we just turn that off, you can see it goes back to normal. I've got a wave height of six. If I bump it up really high, you get some kind of really crazy looking effects. Um, the wave width is 104. I could make it much longer or shorter if I wanted. The direction is 90 degrees because I thought that's what looked best. The wave speed is minus one, so it's traveling to the left. So it's actually moving in the opposite direction to the white parts that are moving to the right. So that makes it a bit more jostly and interesting. It looks like it's kind of flipping around. The phase is zero, and I put the anti-aliasing onto low. And I've got this posterized time set to eight. So what we need to do next is find the loop. 
So because it's at one, I reckon generally it's around about here. One frame before one second. Let's just check that that's the case. Yep. So if I do a little preview of that, we can see that that's looping really nicely. So if you've watched my previous wave warp tutorials, you know it's at this point we render this work area out to a PNG sequence and then import it into Flash. So you go composition. If you're using CC, you add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. If you're using CS6 or below, add to the render queue and make a PNG sequence at 25 frames a second. And then when you're in Flash, you'll be able to use some cell shading techniques. Again, if you don't know how to cell shade in Flash, check out my cell shading tutorial on my website. And you'll be able to add a kind of darker blue in here to give it a bit of depth. Maybe you could add it along these white strokes, kind of taper it a little bit, just to make it look more interesting. You could add some little splashes, some details flying off. But in order to do that, you'd have to either draw over it on a new layer, or you'd have to use trace bitmap, the trace bitmap function that we've looked at in the early tutorials to do that. So that's creating a kind of water spout using After Effects and Flash. Have a go yourself, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Coloring and Activity Book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.